Shane started opening the door and entering the, the house. Okay. Threatening my life, my mother's life. I didn't know what Shane was going to do. It was horrifying. He was dangerous, and I hated him. But I did not want to ruin my life. you got to understand there's more to this story, and that's pretty telling. Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we are talking about a moment in time. A moment when the acting stopped. And it takes us to Oregon, so you know what that means. Rain and trees. It's my favorite. Ashling Tucker Moore Reed, she went by Tucker Reed, the Tuck, was an established author, actor, activist, oh my, journalist, and well, I guess I should kind of mention at the top. Uh, bang Bang Killer 2. She claimed it was in self-defense against a family member who, you know, was barging in. But unfortunately, uh, a video would surface that would throw a bit of kind of cold water on that. He's coming into the house, God damn it! And the story two people told in an interview, well, it's, it's not a story of good guys versus bad guys. Though it rarely is when it comes to family. Let's give it a go! The town of Applegate lies in southern Oregon, and I'm using the term town very generously. Less than 3,000 people live there, and it's known for its wine. You got the vino, the beautiful forests, the lakes, and the mountains country. Close by lie the Siskiyou Mountains, and it's home to inspiration for artists galore. It's isolated, unique, and full of fascinating characters, including my arch nemesis, Bigfoot. So, why don't we take a look at some of those fascinating characters right now? Well, as I said, you know, it's home to artists, and so you got some actors in there too. So how about we take a gander at a movie, a film, ladies and gentlemen, that was made in Southern Oregon. This one. Wait, no, not that one. Not yet. Let's talk about another movie first. the night takes us. <laughs> in 2020, the movie From the Dark was released, a psychological horror and action-packed thriller set in the remotest of Oregonian wilderness. It's about the staff of a lodge in the remote Siskiyou Mountains being trapped there overnight, and it slowly dawns on them. One of them is Licky Lil, and they are picked off one by one. <laughs> I'm hooked already. It was an indie movie. Um, all the actors were from like the local theater groups, so they all kind of overact in that way. Um, but the reviews of it weren't weren't so bad. You'll notice on the IMDb page that all the low reviews have one thing in common: mentioning, well, the story of this video. The lead role in the movie, one of Valerie Faust, what a name, wonder if that comes up in the story, was played by Wynne Reed, and she took the movie by storm. She did that to the movie. Now there is a thing called nominative determinism, and if you're unfamiliar, uh, it's essentially that people kind of lean toward things that fit their name. Um, for example, it's been found in studies that have shown that the name Dennis, there's like an overwhelming, the name Dennis is like overwhelmingly represented among dentists. Um, you know, Usain Bolt is a runner, um, a guy who works in law might have the surname Judge, that kind of thing. Anyways, Win uh, was like the opposite of that. Win Reed was a stage name for Ashling Tucker Moore Reed. The movie was released in 2020, and the filmmakers had no idea she was a killer at the time. The filmmakers were living their own true crime thriller, huh? Tucker Reed, that's Ashling uh, Tucker Moore Reed. By the way, Ashling, it's an Irish name, and it's pronounced Ashling, not Aisling, like everybody uh, I watched in this story pronounced it. She was born in 1989 from California, daughter of Kelly Moore, and Dan Reed, uh, descendants of the Mayflower, so they were part wood. Kelly, her mother, was herself an author and attorney, writing with her husband books such as Deadly Medicine, a true crime book about Janine Jones, a serial killer. I'm skipping ahead here, but much later, a Kelly Moore would write with her two daughters, Tucker and Larkin, a, 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 a series of young adult novels. The first two books in the Amber House Trilogy, which is kind of like a paranormal romance book. Haunted house, ghosts, abilities to see the past and the future, time travel, the whole lot. Two books in the series, Amber House and Never Was. Plans are for more, but that's uh, never quite come to fruition. The reviews are quite positive. 
probably never came to fruition because, well, of what I'm about to tell you. So as you can see, Tucker grew up in a very artistic, creative environment. Something which, in the Southern Oregon community she grew up in, helped foster. Tucker's mom, Kelly Moore, she was someone who was very present for her daughter. Tucker, she attended all, all the plays, she would do her makeup and her dress and all that sort of thing. Tucker was in the rock bands, singing, acting, designing costumes, writing for the local paper, all that sort of stuff. The first book in the Amber House trilogy was released when she was only 19, as part of, and, and like, the deal was a six figure deal with the publication in the house, um, which is a lot of money. I mean, that's pretty good when, you know, you're only 19. Though it was co-written with her mother, who was already an established author, so it's kind of like being born on third base and thinking you hit a triple. In 2010, Tucker attended the University of Southern California to study journalism, cinema, and theater at the School of Cinematic Arts. Probably like one of the best film schools in the world. They've only got like a 3% acceptance rate. Come on. Big plans, she was intent to continue and, and end up working in Hollyweird. This is a fun name I have for Hollywood. Well, I'm pretty sure I invented that. There she was a reporter and assistant editor for like the local student newspaper, and she also had a blog. Uh, she ran, which was called Covered uh, in Band-Aids. It's no longer available, but on the blog, Tucker, an activist against gender violence, she detailed her own experiences with sexual assault. Not only witnessing it at various college parties she attended, but being assaulted herself. The blog was about resources for other women, raising awareness, and her own battles to confront her assaulter. She detailed her communications with the university, who essentially rejected her claims on lack of evidence. Now this got a lot of attention for, for Tucker, and she, she was celebrated, you know, for her bravery in coming forward, trying to help other women and telling of her own experiences. But this is also when kind of the shit hit the fan for Tucker too. Because she named and shamed uh, the person she was alleging um, had assaulted her, and she was actually filing a, a civil case against them, uh, a case for, for assault, battery, false imprisonment, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and negligent infliction of emotional distress. This was rejected by the university, the LAPD, the district attorney, and the name she was naming as the person who did this to her uh, would counter sue Tucker. And Tucker would actually be found liable. It's very interesting to note that a victim can come forward with a binder of evidence that supports their claim that they were um, subjected to a violent attack, but the school will choose to believe a completely unsubstantiated claim from a male student who denies it. Now, dozens of USC students have filed a federal complaint against the school. Stephanie Elam. So shortly after she kind of dropped out of college and she hoofed it back to Oregon. It was three years later then, right in 2016, that shots rang out in a remote ranch in Southern Oregon. On July 26th, uh, 2016, Tucker, her mother Kelly, her grandmother, and a notary were all at um, the grandmother's ranch, big old ranch she owned, and they were going through deeds, guarantees, notary, notarizing, going through, you know, legal documents. Her uncle, Shane Moore, Kelly's brother, uh, he lived on the property, and he had done for some time, and they were kind of all having a bit of difficulties with El Shane. Apparently, they were all terrified of him. And they had been for many, many years. He'd been trying to assert control over the family estate and was very violent about it, uh, like verbally and physically. And at one time he launched an oil can at Tucker's head, walloping her. Uh, Tucker actually got like a, a no contact order uh, against her uncle. That day, he tried to enter the home he was barred from. He was not allowed to enter the house while Tucker was there. He tried to. After shots rang out. Allegedly, he had flown into a rage when he learned that Kelly had gotten an appraiser uh, to, you know, value the estate, you know, thinking of selling, and Shane, who lived there, not too keen on that. The realtor would confirm, by the way, he was threatening. When I went towards the house, he said he was going to up my truck, and he says, and I'm going to kill you and Tucker. And she, um, she said that, he said that to Kelly? He, he said that to Kelly. So anyway, that day it was Tucker, Kelly, grandmother, notary, Shane tried to enter the home. Tucker, in self-defense, she said, she had to shoot him dead.
to have signature or any which one. Um, the uh, I'm Bill Ford. I'm a detective with Medford. Detective. My name is Tony Young. I'm a detective with Medford Police Office. We uh, take a case like this and try to learn as much as we can about what was going on. My maternal uncle, Shane, mm -hmm. um, has been pretty much weekly threatening my life, my mother's life. He, he insulted me in September, so he was not supposed to uh, contact us. He was not supposed to speak to me. He was not supposed to um, call our home. He did all of these things, and every time it was with a threat. So that is kind of background information I can provide you. And um, I, I'm, I just don't feel like I, I'm in a, a good position to speak about the incident today at all without a clear head and without a lawyer present. And I'm sorry about that if that causes you any more trouble. One more thing I want to add to the detective's record, if they're still available. Shane started opening the door and entering the, the house. Okay. You know how, like, in horror movies, the hand goes around the door? Right. Um, and he was, like, wedging himself so the door couldn't be closed again. To fire a gun, and I've always thought you had to cock a gun. Cock it, meaning the hammer back? Yeah, whatever that is. This gun doesn't do that. It just fired. He was dangerous, and I hated him. But no, I did not want to kill my uncle. She said she didn't mean to fire. She thought it had to be had to be caught. So she was just pulling the trigger like for fun, like like it's a fidget spinner. Not like that. It was an accident. They said. I'm telling you that that moments before my brother died, he was assaulting me with the door. He was screaming at me. He was trying to force his way into a house he had no right to be in. I didn't know what Shane was going to do. It was horrifying. He, he was trying to come in and he was try, trying to hurt me. And, and God only knows what else he was going to do. And her mom, Kelly, supported Tucker thoroughly through all of this. She was her advocate always. Sometimes they would even... Lie about it, if you can believe that. Tucker and Kelly would present Kelly as Tucker's manager, her aunt, her agent, her assistant. And she was a real battle axe for her daughter. Did he have a weapon? I have no idea. All I know is I can tell you that I was so scared I can hardly even picture the moment. It's like mice memories. Okay. Jean, can you, can you tell us why you think Tucker might have shot him? I don't, I can't tell you if Tucker shot him. I, I didn't say Tucker shot him. I have no idea who shot him. Did you shoot him? I, I, I don't think so. I don't know. I can hardly remember. Some of her statements are like, what? The trauma of that moment was so appalling and horrifying. I didn't know what Shane was going to do. I didn't know what Shane was going to do. It was horrifying. So if you knew who shot the guy, you wouldn't tell us? That's right. Tucker was charged with manslaughter, and after being sent to jail, her family bailed her out. $200,000. Later, under the name Winreed, she starred in a movie. Now, the event itself, the killing of Shane Moore, which both Tucker and Kelly, you know, they stuck to the story. Their story was the exact same self-defense. They were terrified of him. He tried to barge in, had to shoot him dead. That was their story, and they stuck to it like glue. Um, the police, though, were like... Something here feels a bit off. Earlier that day, Shane had actually called 911. He had called 911 because he himself was scared. Apparently, Tucker had fired, been firing the gun earlier on that same day out in the field, and, and Shane was taking it as, like, warning shots. Dispatch, this is Shelly. Hi, I wonder, uh, I was hoping I could get a sheriff out here. I'm expecting a notary public to be here at, at, at 2 o'clock to 2.30, and I don't want to trouble my sister's over in the house. She's 
She, uh, her kid fired off a gun over there this morning. I'm afraid my sister's going to try to stop the No Republican. That's what I'm afraid of, and I don't, want any, I don't want any trouble. When Shane was killed, he had no weapons on him. He was shot directly in the chest, and he was not near the door. He was outside the door, but like five or six feet from the door. The police did not think this story they were telling was the real one. Your uncle called reporting that you fired a gun on the property today. Well. At that, prior to that time. Well, that's bizarre. With where we're at right now, that's pretty ominous, right? I mean, that's the problem we're getting at when, and, and if you want to stop right there, well, that's one thing, but you got to understand there's more to this story and that's pretty telling. Are you okay? okay. Take a deep breath. See, Shane, like his sister Kelly, had once been a hotshot attorney, but unfortunately he got into the drugs and so bye-bye career. He then, he moved back to the family ranch in Southern Oregon. Um, he was living there, he moved back around the year 2000, so he'd been living there for about 16 years uh, by the time he was killed. And Kelly and Shane, they had another brother named Ryan who had a very different story about Shane than Kelly and Tucker did. He would say Shane was the nicest, kindest person in the family. He moved back to the ranch, but he was helping out, he was looking after it, he was the caretaker of the place, he was looking after their dad who had ALS and he did everything for them. So there was very much two different sides of Shane the police were learning about. And that's the real story. The plan for the ranch was when uh, Kelly and Shane's parents died, the ranch would go to Kelly and Shane, split. 50-50. The other brother, Ryan, he didn't live near them, he wasn't interested at all. However, when the dad passed of ALS, that's when things began to change. Kelly needed money, and she needed it now. The mother began taking out loans and mortgages against the, the family ranch to give her daughter Kelly some money, thereby devaluing the ranch, and that's half of Shane's inheritance and what he was going to get. You can see why Shane would have a problem with his sister needing money. Essentially, she was not only getting her own inheritance earlier, she was getting Shane's portion too. Kelly even tried to get a provision into her mother's will, saying that if Shane did anything to her or the family, something violent like, he would immediately be uh, like disinherited, cut out of the will. So you can see why it would be advantageous to Kelly for Shane to do something violent and thereby be cut out and she would get everything. Shane, when he learned of this, he wanted his mother to sign over the property right now so that it would all be done and dusted. That's called a grant deed, which is, you know, just simply transfer ownership of property. That's why the notary was there that day, the day Shane died, to start transferring, you know, splitting it, splitting it up. So Shane was killed the day he was probably getting exactly what he wanted. The notary would say the day of the, the death, uh, things were weird as hell in the house. Now, due to the order uh, Tucker had, Shane wasn't allowed in the house, which is what they were saying. That's why it was in self-defense. But the notary was saying Shane didn't come near the house. His body was found like five or six feet from the door. So that was the story, and you can see there was some kind of cracks in it. And so, anyway, right before Tucker was going to go on trial for manslaughter, and hopefully she'd be found it was in self-defense and get off, the defense, you know, showed the prosecution, hey, listen, we have this video uh, that will get Tucker off and clearly show it was in self-defense. So, you know, just drop the charges. The video had been taken by Tucker, and when the prosecution saw that exact same video, they thought, are you sure it gets her off? Changes to stay away from the property. Oh, this is a, a grant deed. Did you know this? Oh, this is this is not no. This is not getting signed. Do you know anything about this? No. It was not getting signed. Yes. He's coming into the house. God damn it! Oh, so Pick up the gun. She's not signing a grand deed, Shane. I thought it was a will. She's not signing a grand deed. Yeah. You son of a bitch! She's not signing a grand deed. It's her property. She says she's trying to Yeah, if you if you told her <laughs> Tucker is heard saying he's coming into the house. Kelly opens the door. He's not there. This totally disputes what both Tucker and Kelly were saying in the interview. Did you actually see the door open? Yes. And did you see Shane open the door? Yes. So you could see that. You could see that Shane was in the opening of the door. Yes. And could you see your mom at the door 
Yes, well, trying to put close it and lock it. I, I don't grieve for my brother. I am glad this man is dead. In fact, the entire video made it look like Shane was ambushed at his at the front door. He was he was he was walking up to see what was going on because he was the one who called the notary who was there that day. They opened the door and shot him. That's what the prosecution saw, and they thought the same. This combined with a statement Shane's girlfriend, you know, made because she was there that day. Things were looking a little bit different. Tucker was was talking to to Kelly, her mother, and she said, "You told me to do it. You told me I could do it." Kelly stood there and yelled at Shane, "Haven't you died yet? You piece of <laughs> why aren't you dead yet?" The manslaughter charge was upped to murder. This appeared to be an intentional act and that she was angry during this time. Aisling Tucker Moore Reed, who goes by the pen name Tucker Reed, is a well-known author and journalist. The defense also argued there wasn't enough evidence to show Reed intended to kill her uncle. This was a this was a high stress situation. But the judge felt the evidence was strong enough. Mr. Moore was barely in the door before he was shot and he was shot in the chest and it was at pretty close range. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. It wasn't enough to warrant the author's release before trial. She was angry that he wasn't dead. And to me, that says, you know, that kind of nailed down the, the evidence for me. Now, Tucker was denied bail. And I mean, she was very theatrical about it. Always the show person. She could be heard screaming outside the courtroom. And if you want to put something in there about returning the security to those who posted bail for her, that would be fine to you. So, trial coming up now for murder. But that would not happen. Instead, Tucker was able to plead guilty to manslaughter and the murder charge was dismissed. Ultimately, it was felt it was such a two-sided story. The truth you know, was somewhere vague in the middle. It felt like a conviction for murder was not ironclad. It is a she said, he said story. It's very hard to actually see what happened in the footage. You can see him open the door initially, but he didn't come in. Who knows what was actually going on on the ranch? Maybe they really were absolutely fearful for their lives. Some element of that has to be true. Tucker was ultimately, in 2020, sentenced to six years in prison. Tucker tried to appeal that, saying it was coerced, but that was denied. Was this a case of a mother who was always described as being there for her daughter, being very, very present for Tucker, to the point where they had to lie about their relationship so it wouldn't seem weird? Kelly was around all the time? I don't know, there's just something very strange about Kelly and Tucker's relationship. So was this a case, question mark, of a daughter being manipulated into doing something for her mother? She benefited the most at the end of the day out of all of this. Or was it vice versa? Who knows? Weird one. As usual, the truth is probably buried somewhere in the middle. Whatever the case, it was ultimately uh, ex extremely tragic for, for Tucker, uh, Moore Reed, and... I don't know what the truth is, but... Yeah. It's like that movie from the dark! It's a real life thriller! Or something like that. We will see where the night takes us. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you guys are great as always. I really appreciate you being here, watching this whole video with me. It means a lot to me. Um, yeah, here to the next video, you know, it'll be up in a couple of days. Keep an eye out on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. my time, so like 3 p.m. Eastern, and on Fridays at 8 p.m. my time, that's 3, 3 p.m. Uh, EST, so keep an eye out on Tuesdays and Fridays, and also check out the podcast, which I kind of just post whenever. So until the next one, uh, as always, please take care of each other, and please take care of yourselves, because you know I love you. Mike out.